Welcome to Learn Some Psychology. I'm Mrs. Daniel. In this video, we're going to learn about the locations and functions of the structures in the cerebral cortex, including the frontal lobes, parietal lobes, temporal lobes, and occipital lobes. We will also learn some more specific areas within the cerebral cortex, including the motor and sensory cortexes, Broca's area, and Wernicke's area. The cerebral cortex is the wrinkly outer covering that surrounds the brain. In general, it is responsible for executive processing. This means that the cortex handles more complex thoughts, tasks like problem solving, decision making, and perception. The cortex is divided into two hemispheres, the left and the right, and four sections called lobes. The frontal lobes are the forwardmost sections of your cerebral cortex. You have two frontal lobes, one on the left and one on the right. The frontal lobes start right behind your forehead and extend back to the center of the top of your head. The frontal lobes handle most of your conscious thoughts and most of what makes you, you. They are responsible for problem solving, higher order thinking, judgment, long-term planning, impulse control, personality, and some long-term memory storage, among many other tasks. Basically, most of the complex thoughts that you have are going on in the frontal lobes. Next we have the parietal lobes. Your parietal lobes are near the crown of your head, starting just behind the frontal lobes and extending back by about the width of your hand. Ladies, if you put your hair up in a ponytail, it would rest just on top of your parietal lobes. The parietal lobes are responsible for many tasks, but we will focus on just a few. Perception, mathematical calculations, and your spatial coordinate system. Perception means creating the actual picture of what you hear, see, smell, etc. It means combining all of the information from your senses into a cohesive mental image. Think P for perception, P for parietal. Math calculations take place in the left parietal lobe. And finally, the parietal lobes contain your spatial coordinate system, which is your mental understanding of where you are in space relative to the objects around you. When you close your eyes and navigate around a room without looking, or can move your hand to grab a glass of water without looking at it, you're using your spatial coordinate system. Next, let's discuss the temporal lobes. The temporal lobes are behind your ears, by your temples, one on either side. The temporal lobes are responsible for lots of processes, but in general, they govern auditory processing. The temporal lobes handle understanding or recognition of language, listening to and playing music, and long-term memory storage. Finally, the occipital lobes. The occipital lobes are at the back of your skull, on the bottom, just on top of the cerebellum and the connection to your spine. In fact, the name occipital comes from the word occiput, which means back of the skull. The occipital lobes are sometimes referred to as the visual cortex, because their only job is to process visual information. The fact that a whole section of the cortex is dedicated just to vision should tell you how complex a task vision is, and how much we rely on it as our primary sense. Now we will move on to discussing some more specific areas on the cerebral cortex. First, let's talk about the motor and sensory cortexes, and a strange little diagram we use to explain them called a homunculus. The motor cortex is located at the back of the frontal lobes. It is responsible for controlling your skeletal or voluntary muscles. Do you recall that the cerebellum is also responsible for controlling voluntary movement? This redundant design in the brain is deliberate. If one area is damaged, another area with a similar function can take over. The sensory or somatosensory cortex located right behind the motor cortex at the front of your parietal lobes, is responsible for processing sensory information from your skin and body. When your toe itches, you feel a cold raindrop on your nose, or you bite your tongue, your sensory cortex is where those sensations are felt. But how much of the motor cortex do we use to control our hands versus our feet? Does it take more brain power to feel a kiss on the lips or a poke in the ribs? To answer these questions, we need a special diagram called a homunculus. A motor homunculus is a drawing of the motor cortex with parts of the body drawn around the outside. The bigger a body part is drawn, the more mental energy we use to control its movements. As you can see from this diagram, it takes much more thought power to control the tongue alone than it does to move your whole torso. Why do you think that is? A sensory homunculus is similar. 
The bigger a part of the body is drawn, the more brain power is used to process sensations from that area. As you can see, the lips and face are much more sensitive than the thigh or upper arm. The homunculus diagrams seem confusing, but just remember, size equals brain power. Next, let's discuss the two main areas of the cortex associated with language, Broca's area and Wernicke's area. Broca's area is in the left frontal lobe, just above your left ear. It is responsible for helping to control your speech muscles. It helps you talk. Did you know that boca means mouth in Spanish? Just remember, broca, boca. Wernicke's area is also on the left side of your brain, but in the temporal lobe, behind your left ear. It processes spoken or gestured language so that you can understand it. In fact, when you read silently, the words you read are turned into sounds first, and then processed in Wernicke's area so that you can understand them. This is why it's difficult to read a word you can't pronounce. When these areas are damaged or aren't functioning properly, the result is language aphasia, which means a loss of language ability. Inability to speak is called Broca's aphasia, and inability to understand is called Wernicke's aphasia.